Hello Faith United Youth, welcome to this week's youth video. Um, we are once again in our series called I've Been Meaning to Ask and I love this series. I love the idea of getting to know one another, I love the idea of getting to some of the deeper questions um, which really truly benefits our faith and how we approach God. So today we have an extended amount of scripture that we're going to be reading and um, our theme for the week is, I've been meaning to ask, where does it hurt? So we're gonna look at Mark chapter five, verses 21 through 43, so a lot, right? So I'm gonna get right into it and then we can kind of talk about it. And as I read this, I want you to try to put yourself in the shoes of the people that I'm reading about. Um, this is something that I always try to do when I read scripture. I think it builds empathy. It helps us to understand the context, um, if we can understand the people and what they're going through, and it really brings scripture alive. So while I'm reading this, think about these people in regards to the question, where does it hurt, okay? So, like I said, Mark chapter five, verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Okay, so right away, right to the heart, right? His daughter is dying. So much emotion. So what happens next? So Jesus went with him, he just went with him, right? I love that. Let's think real quick about when we're in pain and we go to Jesus, Jesus goes with us. A large crowd followed and pressed around him and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Okay, so let's pause once again. So they're heading to this, uh, this man named Jairus' little daughter. There's this huge crowd because at this point, Jesus is really popular and people know that he has the power to heal. And so they're all coming towards him. And this woman who has been bleeding for 12 years, she ex expended all of her resources on doctors and they still couldn't figure it out. And she's just desperate. Have you ever felt like that? Where you've done everything you can and you're just desperate. Where does it hurt for her? All over the place, right? Not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, financially spiritually even and yet she has the faith because she thinks to herself if I just touch his cloak if I can just get next to Jesus then maybe I'll be healed and her faith did that right we see that Jesus healed her by proxy basically and so immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her sufferings so powerful at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, which like, whoa, that's, that's some, uh, some Marvel stuff there, right? Like really interesting. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? So like he knew he felt power go out from him and he says, who touched my clothes? So then the disciples say something that's kind of funny. You see the people crowding against you his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? So they're kind of like pointing out the obvious, not really fully understanding what's happening here. You know, Jesus has felt this power go out from him. He's felt that he's healed somebody. And yet, um, you know, all these people are pressing against him. And he's like, well, who touched me? And his disciples are like, well, you know, everyone, <laughs> everyone's touching you right now. Um, but you know, Jesus is saying like, no, no, you don't get it. Some, like something's happened. Something big has happened in someone's life. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. 
So, you know, you can imagine that this woman is probably thinking like, oh no, did I do something wrong? This could can't be true that I could actually be healed. She's probably in shock. She probably is afraid for what Jesus is going to say to her. And yet Jesus, love Jesus, he is gentle with her. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So while Jesus was so, still speaking, so he's still talking to this woman, and this interaction is happening while he's still on his way to Jairus' house. Well, let's not forget about that. His daughter who was dying. It says, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? So they're basically like, just give up, it's done. Have you ever felt like that? Just give up, it's done. It's really powerful. Overhearing what they said, Jesus said, no, 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 no. Don't be afraid, just believe. Maybe you need to hear that today. Maybe you feel like something's done, but you understand that Jesus says, don't be afraid, just believe. He has good things around the corner. And if you continue with me tracking here, you'll see the goodness that Jesus has around the corner. He didn't let anyone follow him, except for the, the three, the main three guys, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, so they came to Jairus' house, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And this is, this is how they mourned in this time frame. It was a very loud, very outward. You know, nowadays we're very somber and quiet, right? That's kind of the cultural way. And, you know, but back then it was loud, tearing their clothes, making a whole scene because of their, their felt emotion. They're showing what they feel. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him, probably in bitterness, right? Have you ever, you know, had something happen where you're really upset about it and somebody's just like trying to give you hope and you're just like, yeah, right, right? But he took, put them out, so he took them outside. It says, after he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother, which I love. You know, the people who really, really care, his, his fa this child's father and mother, and the disciples who were with him. And he went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was around 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. And he gave strict orders not to tell anyone not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. One of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible is this verse. Little girl, I say to you, get up. Because Jesus has the ability to take what's dead and bring life to it. And maybe he's saying to you today to get up, to walk where you have felt like you couldn't walk before. I know this always speaks to me in our series where we're talking about where does it hurt, we can look at these stories and we can see these people who have really severe pain, physical pain, emotional pain, the death of a child, which there's nothing worse than. And Jesus comes into this situation and he speaks into it and he brings hope and he brings healing and he brings life. Now, we can learn a lot about how to respond because of how Jesus responds to people. He doesn't negate their pain. He doesn't tell them, just go be happy. He listens to them. He goes with them. He t engages with them, right? When we're going through something really difficult and really hard, what we need is empathy, love, compassion, mercy, grace. What we don't need is somebody saying, well, just just buck up. It's not that bad, right? At least this is not that. At least, you know, you haven't been bleeding for 13 years. <laughs> you know, um, I hope that this is a lesson to us and how we can be there for people who are hurting. This entire series is about how we can engage with people in the way that Jesus does. Jesus speaks into their darkness and he is just there with them and if you feel like you don't know how to be there for somebody just being there 
even with not saying anything is sometimes the best way to go. So I hope that you were able to get something from this. Maybe you can think about for yourself, where does it hurt? Where are you in need of Jesus to come into your life and bring his healing touch or even to bring some understanding? Take some time and ask him about that and really think about that. And then think about how you can be there for others who are hurting in the way that Jesus was. Thank you again for listening and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.